<laughs> Maximus. Odds are today, no matter who you ask in the world of aviation, which plane is better, the Airbus A350 or the Boeing 787? By far, most will often say that the Airbus A350 is the better airplane, and it's hard to argue. The A350 is newer, quieter, and more comfortable. It's built almost entirely of composite materials, whereas the 787 is only made of about 50%. And most importantly, the A350 has an incredible range. And yet, despite all this, airlines around the world continue gobbling up the Boeing 787 at a faster rate and in greater quantities than the A350. So the question is why? Well, to answer that, we have to go back to the beginning. The origin of the original future jet, the 787 Dreamliner. The Boeing Dreamliner was a revolutionary, groundbreaking aircraft. The world had never seen anything like it. After all, the Dreamliner was a modern marvel of first in aviation engineering. It was the first commercial airliner that used advanced carbon fiber composites for 50% of its airframe, including the wings and fuselage, significantly reducing its weight. It was the first commercial airliner with more electric systems in place of traditional hydraulic systems, and the 787 was designed to be the first commercial aircraft up to 20 to 25% more fuel efficient than previous generation aircraft in its class. This was especially due to a combination of factors, including its lightweight composite structure, advanced engines, and improved aerodynamics. It was the first commercial airliner to offer a significantly improved, more comfortable cabin environment, including lowering the cabin altitude to 6,000 feet instead of 8,000 feet, plus higher humidity levels and improved air filtration to help reduce jet lag and enhance passenger comfort. It was the first commercial airliner with electric dimmable windows, the first commercial aircraft to utilize a computer-controlled turbulence reduction system, and the first commercial aircraft with hybrid laminar flow control on the tail fin and horizontal stabilizer. And while there were minor defects and growing pains along the way, the Dreamliner was also one of the safest, best-selling aircraft in the history of aviation. India air crash aside, the Dreamliner is nearly a perfect aircraft. And the 787 stayed that way until, well, until Airbus took everything that made the 787 so special and improved upon every last detail and created what most aviation geeks will tell you is now the new perfect aircraft. And that, of course, is the Airbus A350. The A350 is everything the 787 is, just better. Bigger, stronger, faster, more fuel efficient, and simply better in every way. Yet, Despite all its improvements to one-up the 787, a decade and a half since the first 787 took to the skies, airlines around the world continued to buy the Boeing 787 at a faster rate than the newer, better A350. But how is that possible? If the A350 is better, it seems like a no-brainer. So then why isn't it winning more orders than the Dreamliner? Well, the answer, like almost everything in the airline industry, isn't just about the airplane especially when it comes to brand loyalty. Because aircraft procurement often has more to do with strategy, timing, and economics rather than engineering perfection. And actually, the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350 were never designed to compete directly. As a matter of fact, the real A350 competition won't begin until the 777X takes to the skies next year. Then I'm pretty sure the A350, like the 787 before, will be replaced as the best aircraft flying. But that's a story for another day. But when the Boeing 787 was launched in the early 2000s, it was with a very specific mission in mind. To revolutionize the so-called long and thin routes, the long haul flights that don't have enough demand to fill the giant aircraft like a 777 or 747. Think of cities like Boston to Tokyo or Denver to Frankfurt. Boeing envisioned a future where airlines would skip the giant connecting hubs and fly smaller, more efficient planes directly between secondary cities. So the 787 was born to be light, versatile, and efficient on these thinner, long-haul routes. The Airbus A350, by contrast, came later, and it had a completely different target in mind. Airbus wanted a plane that could replace its aging A340s and 777s on high-demand long-haul routes. The A350 is bigger, 
has longer legs and is meant for heavy-duty flights like London to Sydney or New York to Singapore. You know, the true marathon routes where you pack in hundreds of passengers, especially the premium high-ticket passengers. So while many often try to compare the two, actually, from the beginning, these planes were solving different problems. But the airplane itself is only half the story. Airlines don't just buy jets based on fuel burner noise levels. The first key factor they look at is how a plane fits into their existing ecosystem. Take American or United, for example. These are Boeing heavy airlines already operating fleets of 737s, 777s, and adding the 787 makes perfect business sense. First and foremost, pilots can transition easily, especially considering the differences in flight control systems between the Airbus and Boeing and the time loss it would take to retrain the pilots. Then there's the maintenance, the same familiarity as what the pilots applies. Maintenance crews already know Boeing systems. Spare parts, training, and infrastructure are already in place. Also, the 787 shares a lot of DNA with the 777. They have the same cockpit philosophy, similar systems, and design. So just that commonality alone saves millions. But that commonality philosophy isn't unique to Boeing. Airbus implemented the same technique by linking the A350 to the A330 and A320 family design. But to quote Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last. And the simple fact is that Boeing got a 50-year jump on Airbus making airplanes. And over that time, they were able to bury their roots deep in markets like North America and Japan, much like Apple adopted the same philosophy. Basically, you get your customers and you get them for life. But still, the A350 is a better plane, right? So why aren't more airlines grabbing this perfect new jet? Well, that's because another advantage Boeing has over Airbus is flexibility. Because unlike the A350, the 787 comes in three sizes. First, the baby 787-8 is small and perfect for routes that are too big for an A321, but too small for a 777. The middle child, the 787-9, hits the sweet spot right in the middle. Ideal for medium to long haul, replacing aging A330s and 767s. And then there's the big sister, the 787-10, big enough for the passenger dense routes like New York to London. But it's also optimized for shorter long haul flights also. Unlike Boeing's Dreamliner, Airbus offers only two variants of the A350. The 900, which competes directly with the 787-9, and the A350-1000, which is more of a replacement for some airlines for the Boeing 777-300ER. So, so far we've seen that airlines' top priority when purchasing aircraft isn't just the best and newest, especially for airlines that have an all or mostly Boeing fleet. Staying with Boeing's lineup simply gives airlines more options to tailor their fleets. But the biggest reason the Dreamliner sells a bit better than the A350 is that although the A350 is arguably a superior aircraft, the bottom line is the bottom line. And the bottom line is always the price. Boeing has been willing to deeply discount the 787 to secure market share, sometimes as much as 50% off list price depending on the deal. Why? Well, because Boeing plays the long game. The sale isn't just the plane, it's the maintenance contracts, the spare parts, and the training programs. Once you're in Boeing's ecosystem, it's a very sticky business. Airbus, however, while Airbus, of course, will always be willing to make a deal, they tend to hold their line on pricing a bit more. And that brings us back to if you ain't first, you're last. And that's because timing matters. The 787 entered service in 2011. The A350 didn't arrive until 2015. That four-year head start was crucial, Airlines needing to replace older jets, especially aging A330s and 767s, went to Boeing first. But what about their better passenger experience on the A350? While it's true the A350 is quieter and roomier, and yes, the humidity and cabin pressures are a touch more comfortable, but you gotta ask yourself, how many passengers really notice? How many pick their airline based on fuselage width? Well, some maybe, but not the majority. But what about the fuel savings? Well, while Airbus likes to highlight its fuel efficiency, fuel burn per seat isn't everything. The 787's lighter structure means lower landing fees, lower maintenance costs, and better economics on shorter long haul missions. So if you're flying Boston to London, not Singapore to New York, the numbers often favor the 787. And the 787 does very well on medium to long haul routes under 12 hours, better sometimes than the A350 on shorter segments. 
Finally, Boeing offers a massive global support network, maintenance, spare parts, digital fleet management tools, all of it integrated. For airlines already logged into Boeing, adding the 787 just makes life easier. So in conclusion, why does the 787 keep winning even if it isn't the best dog in the fight? The short answer, because the 787 solves more problems for more airlines more often. It's not always about being the best airplane, it's about being the right airplane at the right time at the right price. However, the 787 most likely won't remain the leader indefinitely because as the Dreamliner ages, more airlines will naturally gravitate to the A350. However, that may take a decade or two. So if you think about it, the 787 is really in a class of its own. Is the A350 truly the better aircraft? Which do you prefer? Let me know down below. And until next time, yeah, this is Maximus.